world. Today, we are going to talk about the power of women. How is it that we really develop this power that it's, uh, it's granted to all of us, but sometimes we use a little bit, just a small portion of this gift that has give, has, uh, given to us. So I'm going to talk about two main issues that are not allowing us to really empower ourselves as women. And these are two main fears that we have. And that when we conquer them, we will get all our power. We will develop this power. And the first one is the fear of being alone, of loneliness. So for many, many women, it's a big issue to be alone, to enjoy your loneliness, to love your loneliness. We all have been trained that you have to be, you know, married, you have to be with someone. But at this, in these times, we are learning that these Aquarian relationships can only happen when you have learned to love yourself. And the first act of loving yourself is to learn to love your loneliness. Why we are so scared of being alone? Because when we sit with ourselves, when we are in silence with ourselves, our past come again to us. And most of the time, we have not healed our When we are alone, we have to face our self-criticism, our self-degradation, and our self, when we make ourselves little. For many women, this is a, this is a habit. And to face loneliness and to learn to love it is a great achievement. Because actually we are never alone. You know, everyone is part of you. Every person is a part of you. When you Understand that there, there is no loneliness. That you are part of everything. And there is only one. There is no loneliness. Why we feel lonely? It only happens because we don't know ourselves. When you know. When you really know yourself, you don't fear to be alone. When you are happy with your soul, when you have learned to enjoy your own soul, you will not have any fear of being alone. When we are Fearful to be alone, we want to have a partner. We want to run to have someone with us. I'm not saying that you should not have someone with you. You should not marry. I'm saying that first you have to learn to be with yourself. 
and completely love it. Give me one second because I have to put my... Uh, okay. Sorry. So, the second fear that we have and that when we conquer it, we will become very secure women is the fear of uh, looking for appreciation, for validation. If in, you still in your life depend on other people's opinion and you look for answers in other people, it means you're still not yourself. You still don't know yourself enough. Every moment that you as a woman are looking for validation or appreciation and you don't first go to yourself and have your own evaluation of yourself. You will feel insecure and in any relationship you will be exploited and it means you will not be yourself because you are fearful of, of yourself and of your aspects that are not very clear to you. So, as a woman, how do we become secure? How do we really can achieve that status where we depend on ourselves and we depend on our soul and we have learn to really embrace ourselves. What is the problem? We are the, the source of power. We are the Adi Shakti. That's what we have learned, right? All of us. What does it mean? What does it mean to be the source of power? To find this, this power, we have to understand that our ego, our uh, lower self or the outer self has emotions, basic emotions that we all know like fear, anger, desires, guilt, jealousy, so on. All these emotions when we don't work on them, when we react to them, because they come unconsciously and we don't have to develop a relationship with them, they will block us and they will make us small. So it all, the, all your power depends in how much you have learned not to react to yourself. Most of the time we say we should 
not react to others, but actually the real problem is when we always react to ourselves. It means when we react to our own anger, we are angry, for example. We are angry and we react to our anger. We say, oh, I should not have anger. Why am I having anger? Or you feel anger and you feel more angry because you are having the anger. Or the fear. The fear appears and you react to it with more fear. You feel guilty, you react to the guilt feeling and you go deeper to feel more guilty. We attack ourselves. So what I'm saying is that emotions can make us very small, limited, or they, if you learn how to go beyond them, they can become a source of consciousness. And so that's what meditation is teaching us. That when we accept what we feel, what we are going through, when we accept completely our reality, when we accept completely ourselves, Everything that we are going through. And we don't react to it. Then. These emotions. Will become. A source of consciousness. The fear. Will make you. Do the way. To achieve what you want. You will become brave. It's the same energy. You can be very to fall into fear or you can use that same energy and do what you have to do and become brave. Same thing with anger. Anger can destroy you can give you cancer or can make you separate from everybody, even your own soul, because this is what anger does. It separates you from your own soul and from everybody. But if you accept it, you allow it in yourself and you go through it through, for example, breathing. The anger will teach you how to do what you have to, how to do it. Will give you this, the power for action. So, we are made perfect. And we as women, we are emotionally more powerful than men. It can be, it can make us more insecure or it can make us, give us this power for creation. 
the same energy that we use for se sexuality, emotions, this, this same energy, when we learn to transform them, that energy that energy will become our strength and our strength is wisdom how does a woman become wise only when she accepts what she's going through when she learns to transform the emotions through this process that I just, I just explained, when she learns not to react to what she's going through. Oh, I should not have this. I should not feel fear. I should not feel anger. Oh, I should not feel insecure. Why this is happening to me again? No. Accept it. Accept everything you are going through. I know this sounds so easy, but it's the most difficult thing. So, the power of your emotions of your sexuality, when you learn through acceptance, through devotion, through surrender, you will create silence, you will create inner peace. Because when conflict ends, Silence will come. And then all this energy of your emotions will be available for understanding, for wisdom. There is no way to become wise If it, you don't practice acceptance and you love what you are going through, there is no way. It means you have to open your heart. It means you have to expand your heart frequency. Only when you expand your heart frequency, you will stop being in duality and the, your frequency will elevate. And silence, peace, comes from acceptance. So intuition will wake up and you will get your own guidance. Before we have the spiritual guidance, the intuition, we have the ego guidance. And the only way is through peace. And before peace is love. Love is acceptance. Love is acceptance of everything you are going through. So this is real power. To accept 
Yogi Bhajan used to say, Bhakti will give you Shakti. It means acceptance, surrender is what really gives you the power. It's the feminine aspect of your personality that will give you the Shakti, the power. In these times that we are going through, women have to heal their relationship with the feminine. Not only women, also men. This is the time that all the feminine in everyone has to be healed. We have, we are ending a, a time of the dominance of masculine. Thousands of years that actually were the balance of the yuga system. I will explain you. I think most of you are teachers, right? No? Most of you. Right. So, you know, do you remember the, the yuga system? Do you remember? The yuga, the satya yuga, and the kali yuga, and the tetra yuga, and duapar yuga, remember? Maybe you have seen this scheme, this circle, hmm? where the yugas, uh, Describe a process of human development. What I want to say now, I don't, I don't, I will not go into that now, but I just want to explain you that in the Kali Yuga, the masculine represents the outer consciousness and the material consciousness, but in the opposite time, when we were in Satya Yuga, it was the feminine aspect of consciousness. Humans were very much connected to the, to the cosmos, to the interdimensional consciousness that was in the Satya Yuga. And also, uh, humanity was connected to all the feminine all the cycles of nature. But then, as everything goes from one op aspect to the opposite, we just now went through the masculine. I just want to explain that it's a balance, right? It's just a balance. It's not that men are the bad ones and the, all these that we, for last decades have been, you know, claiming. It's just a balance of energy. And in this time, we are again going back to integrate the feminine aspect in everyone. So in us, in women, we all, we all have to heal the relationship with our feminine aspect. And it means to heal the relationship with our mother. Most of, I realized, most of women have a lot of issues with their mothers. And it's, and it's totally understandable because it's a generational uh, issue that women have not experienced self-love. And if, if a mother is very angry, this anger is understood by the daughter 
have has rejection and uh, the state of consciousness of the mother becomes the inner aspect of that daughter. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All the feminine is the inner aspect. It means the core self-love of every human being. It comes on how your mother talked to you in the first years of life. How she felt you. How she saw you as a projection of herself. So that feminine inner most deep aspect of our selves that is the relationship that we have with ourselves. All the self-love, all the self-acceptance, this is our feminine aspect. How much we can embrace ourselves. And for most of women, Sometimes we don't understand why we have this anger inside, this inner voice of criticism with ourselves. And most of the time, it comes how our mother used to talk to us. To us. How she treats us in this period of life. So this is how we talk to ourselves. This is the conversation that we have with ourselves. This is the inner voice. Sometimes we are very hard on ourselves. We don't have Compassion to ourselves. So if this is the situation in your life, this is what you have to learn. And this, again, what I was saying before, the only way to wisdom is to open your heart. And it can only happen When you stop that criticism, when you stop that perfectionism, when you stop putting outside your standards and you are not the standard. So wisdom can only happen through love. The only path to wisdom is love and love is a huge power. The biggest power is to love yourself and stop the criticism and this inner conversation when you make mistakes. When you commit mistakes and you see your weaknesses, how you talk to yourself in that moment. It 
you know, the only way to become intuitive that is the guidance of wisdom is to be neutral, to develop a neutral mind. Neutral mind is what, what will awake intuition in you. When you master the intuitive mind. And to be neutral, this is the challenge. And it's not to be neutral outside. It's to be neutral with your own self, with your own mind, with your own life, with your own emotions. Remember, neutral mind will give you silence. And silence will awake your wisdom. So we will experience now how much we can love our loneliness. Hmm? Where our inner loneliness, how much we can experience our inner self without reacting. So